guys, today uh, we're going to discuss tools uh, newly created by Microsoft specifically for professional data scientists. My name is Vadim Karpasenko and I'm a cloud developer advocate and I'm in studio with Ashish. Ashish, introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I'm Ashish Bateja. I'm a program manager on Azure Machine Learning and today we are here to talk about the newly released Azure Machine Learning tools and services mm -hmm. that should help a professional data scientist to, to run an end-to-end -end data science workflow. Nice. So um, before we get started with the demo, I would like to showcase some of the capabilities of the new tools and services All right. uh, by going through uh, just a few slides and then we can jump out to the demo. Yeah, it will help us to understand basically why, what kind of components we're working with and how they all integrate it. Sure. Awesome. So let's get started. Yeah. So what you are seeing here is a set of what we call as Azure Machine Learning Services, mm -hmm. Experimentation and Model Management Services. Okay. And then we, we are also uh, releasing Azure Machine Learning Workbench, mm -hmm. which is a desktop application. Mm -hmm. And the same capa capabilities that Azure Machine Learning Workbench provides, we are adding the similar capabilities to an extension inside Visual Studio Code tools for AI. Okay, so basically developers who are already using those IDs will not need to do anything, right? They can use those additional uh, plugins to basically write Python code, and then uh, model management system will help them to manage all of those runs, right, and keep track of their experimentations. Yeah, exactly. So pretty awesome. much whatever uh, ab abilities that we have in the workbench, you mm -hmm. can have pretty much all the functionality inside Visual Studio Code mm -hmm. with just one caveat. There's a data preparation uh, aspect to it, right. which is only available in Workbench. And we'll get to it as we jump onto that. Yeah, yeah. And believe me, guys, it's a really cool capability. <laughs> All right, go on. OK. So what Azure Machine Learning and the related services provides you mm -hmm. is the ability whereby, as a data scientist, you can start simple. You can start building your models and doing a data prep and experimentation, all mm -hmm. that stuff, on your laptop right there. Mm -hmm. okay. And as you see that you have to scale out or scale up to a cloud scale, you can use any of these options that you see on the screen on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. You can you can uh, scale to like a Spark cluster or a GPU virtual machine sitting nice. on cloud and whatnot. Yeah. So this gives you a lot of power whereby you can use uh, the cloud compute to mm -hmm. scale up and s or scale uh, Models. Depending on your requirements. Yeah, if you, for exactly. instance, doing some deep learning, then probably GPUs is your choice. Exactly. Right? So, awesome. exactly. So how do you get it? How do you get started? So you are you are familiar with this is Azure portal. You yes. go to the Azure portal. You can either go to as I've highlighted here AI and cognitive services section, mm -hmm. or you can just search for uh, say machine learning, and you'll be presented with options of provisioning an experimentation account and a model management account. Got it. So these are the prerequisites before you get started. Mm -hmm. Because this is how we manage your experiments mm -hmm. and we manage the models that you end up creating. Yeah, so basically that's how my results of the experimentation will be recorded and that's why we need this account. Exactly. Got it. So this is the screen you'll be presented with. It's a usual uh, uh, screen on Azure portal whereby you can provision a resource, mm -hmm. you get your experimentation account, and there's an, a section to get a mo model management account here, mm -hmm. and you also end up providing a storage, which is what we'll be using to manage your experiments. Mm, makes sense. And once you're done with it, you'll be given an option to download the Azure Machine Learning right. Workbench tool, either for Windows or if you're a Mac user, mm -hmm. for Mac OS. Okay. Any plans for Linux? Just Linux is supported. L awesome. Linux is supported not with the workbench, yeah. but Linux is supported with the uh, with the model management. So you can manage your models still on a Linux. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I'll be I'll be showing off how we deploy it on an ACS cluster, nice. a model on an ACS cluster which is uh, running on Linux. Uh huh. ACS uh, that's the container cluster, right? Exactly. Yep. So real quick, this 
most likely is my last slide before we jump onto the demo. Awesome. So as a result of getting experimentation account and the model management account, mm -hmm. uh, you have got this ability. In the experimentation account, we will keep track of your projects. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you can start simple, start on, on local. Mm -hmm. As you are clear that, okay, now you want to go to production, you can scale up, scale out your models and uh, your experiments and whatnot. Right. And we'll also be tracking your run history as part of the experimentation account. Mm -hmm. With model management, as the name says, will be maintaining all your containers for the models okay and will be will will enable you to manage and monitor your deployed models got it so think about scenarios whereby you need some sort of lineage uh, lineage or aud auditability yep. you want to see like 2 years down the line what all models you developed why you chose the one you chose and kind of explainability around the models mm -hmm. that's where this whole model management account helps out mm, okay that makes sense got it Cool, okay, do you wanna start with a demo? Sure. Or real quick, we can just go through maybe the experimentation service as well. Yeah, if you have a couple of slides, why uh, not? Yeah, so this is what you get as part of experimentation and before I jump into it, I really want to sort of take a step back and talk about uh, the data science life cycle. Yes. A, data, a professional data scientist usually starts with, usually you have a business problem to start with. Along with the business problem, you have lots of data. Mm -hmm. So a data scientist ends up spending a lot of time on preparing that data. And cleaning the data. And cleaning the data, yeah. oh what man. we also call as data wrangling, right? Or so yuck shaving, I heard this term before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So once you clean the data, once mm -hmm. you get a data into a shape whereby you can reason over it or yeah. build models out of it or run experiments on it, so that step is called a data preparation step. Mm -hmm. After data preparation, once you have data in that shape, you can run experiments on that data. Right. And that's where we enable agile experimentation. Okay. Once you are clear as a data scientist that, okay, I'm fine with my experiment and mm -hmm. I'm fine with this model, which is what I want to deploy now, right. that's the last step, a very important step, where we enable you to deploy your model as a REST API. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about it. Okay. So with this in the background as the data science lifecycle, this is what uh, the experimentation services service pro provides you. And on your extreme right, as, as I said, you can start simple, you can start running experiments on a local machine. Mm -hmm. We don't expect a data scientist to start running experiments straight away, let's say on a GPU. Yeah, that doesn't make right? sense, yeah. So you can start simple, start local. As mm -hmm. you see a need, you can scale it to what we call as data science VM on, on mm -hmm. cloud, or you can yeah. scale it out to a Spark cluster and machine learning server and whatnot. Makes sense. So this is what you get with the experimentation service. Mm -hmm. and. Now, once you're done with the experiment, again, going to the last part of the data science lifecycle, which mm -hmm. is model management, we let you deploy your models on a Docker container. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about it, this is extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. If you can deploy, Docker is a standard right now, uh, today, right? So it, it's a container, right? So if you have deployed your model as a REST API in a Docker container, the same Docker container which is running on your local machine, again you can start simple on your local machine, mm -hmm. or what we call as a single node deployment, and you can then take it to Azure Container Service, right. uh, or you can take it to like Edge devices, Spark clusters, and whatnot. Right. It allows it, you this reproducibility of the environment. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so scaling out becomes extremely easy. It's, mm -hmm. it's a Docker end of the day. It works as well on your on-prem or cloud. So Makes sense. All right. So yeah, with this, let's jump onto the demo. All right. So the UI you are seeing here is uh, the Azure Machine Learning Workbench. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of how the UI looks like. So you can create a new project from here. So the key thing to point out here is, I mean, project name directory is your usual stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you can provide a Visual, a Visual Studio or a VSTS Git repository URL. Mm -hmm. This is extremely useful. If you want to collaborate with a fellow data scientist mm -hmm. as you're working on certain experiments together, so this 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 enables that kind of collaboration. So right? VSTS, it's Visual Studio Team Services. Visual Studio Team Services mm -hmm. Git repository, yeah. right? So you can just provide that here and it's optional. If you don't mm -hmm. want to use it, you don't have to use it, but it, we, we give you that capability. Mm -hmm. And then you can provide workspaces. On Workspaces are essentially ways to sort of manage your projects. You okay. want to keep certain projects under a given workspace and, uh, mm -hmm. and then we give you quite a few 
uh, samples to start with mm -hmm. and backed up by, by an amazing documentation. If you go to help and go to documentation, you will see uh, tutorials there whereby you can run these samples and learn about the tool. Okay. So I won't create a new one because I already have a few projects created. So what you're seeing here are my workspaces here. Under the workspaces, I have uh, the projects here. Mm -hmm. So again, taking a step back, we have a data preparation phase right. and then experimentation and model management. Mm -hmm. So let's go over these one by one. Okay. And as you can see on the home page, you have some cool stuff, links to documentation, right. videos and whatnot. So everything you need just to start basically. E exactly. Okay. So jumping onto the data preparation. So as we have talked to various data scientists within mm -hmm. and outside Microsoft, we came to know about an interesting thing which is a data scientist ends up spending 50 to 80% of their time on preparing data. Wow, so before they jump onto all the cool stuff of yeah. building models and running experiments and whatnot, right? So we wanted to make sure that we provide an experience mm -hmm. whereby data preparation becomes an easy job. Mm -hmm. So this is where what we have come up with is what we call as uh, intelligent data preparation. Okay. And you, you'll see what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. So, you can add a data source here by going on this link. I'll probably just add a data source real quick. And for the demo purpose, mm. quite a few options. <laughs> yeah, for the demo purpose, I'll quickly go go and pick uh, a CSV. Mm -hmm. I have some weather data here. And All right, so it allows you to preview yeah, what will be in each of the columns. Yeah, exactly. That's good. And I'm keeping my default options. You can get the sample data if you're uh, talking to, let's say, Azure Bob Storage. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get all the data on your laptop, and I'll just say finish. I'll just keep it the default settings for now. All right. right? So once you see the, the data here, mm -hmm. you can look at the metrics, and you can check various metrics. Uh, like number of missing values and this gives you at a glance a quick idea of how your data looks like. Right. right. And because for many models you need to have all the values populated, at yeah. least with zeros or something. E exactly. Yeah. Or you want to see outliers and stuff exactly. like that, right? Yeah. And then as you hit on prepare, once you're ready to prepare data, it asks you to uh, pick what we call as a deep prep file. I mm -hmm. already have one, so I will, I will not create a new one. I'll just say OK here. Mm -hmm. And it takes me to this uh, data prep data flow. And this is the data prep file here. OK. OK. So what, what I want to showcase here is real quick on how we make use of what we call as PROS, Program Synthesis by Example. Mm -hmm. It's a technology built by Microsoft Research. And we are making use of it here in this tool, what awesome. we call as intelligent data prep. OK. So usually, so let's say in the, the example I'm taking here is, Based on my business scenario, I want to transform this data. Mm -hmm. So usually for this kind of a problem, a data scientist would write a code in Python. Yeah. In this Use regular expression, something like or, that. Or something like That's, that, right? Yeah. So in this case, what, what I'll do is I'll just do a right click, and I'll pick an, and you can see there are a lot of options. Here. Yeah, OK. But I'll pick an option here in this case, which is desired column by example. Mm. So as the name says, instead of coding, I'll be providing an example, or mm. my intent. Okay. That this is how I want this state to look like. Okay. And based on the example I provided, it will synthesize a lot of programs in the background. Mm -hmm. Pick a program that meets my example. Do you know what kind of machine learning technique actually it uses uh, behind the scenes? Oh, this is pros. That's what I was referring pros. to. Okay. Yeah, the program synthesis by example. I was thinking maybe it's like some sort of R and answer or I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And you can give it, depending on the complexity of your scenario, you can give it as many examples as you want to. Uh -huh. So let, 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 let's see how it works. Yeah. So in this particular case, I, based on, again, my business problem, I don't like date in this particular format. Uh -huh. Rather, I want to provide a date in, in a different format as needed by the problem I'm looking to solve here. Mm -hmm. right? So I'll just provide a date. So caps lock is on. Mm. Right. As always. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just provide a date. Uh, and in, in this format, right? Mm -hmm. So it already give you a couple of suggestions, e kind of standard formats. Exactly. But you can choose yeah. whatever and fits you. Yeah. And now the interesting part is, in the original date, there is also a time alongside it. Yeah. 
for my problem i want to look at this time in a 2 hour window mm -hmm. so for for example if it is a 12:54 am i would rather like to see it as a 12 am to 2 am kind yeah, of a thing sense. can i put it in a bucket particular e bucket e exactly okay so i'll just say 12 am to 2 am so I'm, I'm just telling it my intent right. this is how i want to look at it okay if you look at rest of the rows here they're all null and the moment i hit enter based on the intent or the example i provided in the first row it will mm -hmm. try to change the rest of the rows right okay let's see so did we guessed it correctly or not then when i expand it so as you can see it has changed other rows and then it gives me an option so if you see it is still analyzing data Mm -hmm. So where I've highlighted it is still analyzing, it is still making a change to the rest of the rows, right? So, and as you can see, it has changed quite a few of those. I can already see some of them are not really correct. But they are overlapping, in this case at least, right? And yeah. we can fix it. So, and once it is done, it's done analyzing, it says, okay, I can review what it has done, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as I click next, I clearly see, okay, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's not what I want, right? So I can go in here, in this example, in this case, I would rather want it like a 2 p.m. to 3 p 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. because yep. it's 3.54 p.m., right? Yep. So the moment I say enter, now think about it, I've given it another example now. Yeah. So I'm yeah. sort of training it mm -hmm. with more and more examples so that it learns from it and right. generates that code and it uh, changes the other values accordingly. That is really nice. That allows you basically avoid all this pain of creating your own regular expressions yeah. or writing Python scope to yeah. money. And, money yeah, and, and think about nice. the bar here. You can change a sample data on your local laptop or desktop. Mm -hmm. It generates a Python script out of it. Mm -hmm. You can apply the same script to maybe whatever other data sort you of have. millions of rows nice. sitting somewhere on the cloud okay. in an SDI cluster or something, and just it it will change it for you. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to showcase as far as uh, the data preparation is concerned. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, now let's move on to the experimentation part of it. Once okay. I've prepared my data, I can now run experiments on it. Right. So for experimentation, I would like to go to uh, a different project, Iris here. Oh yeah, Iris data set, yeah. classic one. <laughs> yeah, classic one, like, uh, hello world for data scientists, right? Yep. So, and I can quick, give, quickly give an overview on how this left navigation bar looks mm -hmm. like. This folder icon, again, stores all my files, my Python files, and all the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have this, what we call as a run history on what all uh, experiments I've run so far. Okay. This is uh, the notebook area, whereby mm -hmm. we enable you to use Jupyter notebooks that mm. you, as a data scientist, you know and love. Right. Exactly same interface here. You can start using Jupyter Pretty notebooks nice. right in the workbench. So if you want to experiment iteratively, so to speak, test some of your ideas, mm -hmm. Jupyter notebook, this particular part will be perfect for e you. Exactly. Nice. And it is exactly the Jupyter notebook, again, as a data scientist that you know and love. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just a part of the, the, the whole product. Aspect, Very nice. Right? All right. So, yeah, and this is the area where you prep data that we That's just talked about. Data. Right? Yep. Got it. So, now, going on to the experimentation part. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, this is again one of the examples that we have in our, ga in our gallery. I mm -hmm. would strongly encourage you to play with it. We have tutorial based on it and you can look at all the steps yourself as well. Okay. But just to quickly showcase, uh, so in Iris, it's, it's a very well-known data set okay. whereby we will determine what type of flower it is mm -hmm. based on these four values. Right. As you are seeing here, like a sepal length, width, and a petal length and width. Mm -hmm. So these four values will be the input values, and right. based on this, it's a typical classification problem, right? Yeah. So based on this, using a logistic regression, we will determine whether, like, what type of flower it is. Mm -hmm. so and there are three different types of exactly of yeah. virus. Yeah. So and as you can see, I've, I'm using like a logistic regression here. Mm -hmm. I'm providing some regularization rate. If you do not provide a parameter, I just pick like 0 0.01 as my default. Mm -hmm. And once I'm done with the experiment, I'm storing a model in, in a well-known uh, Python format, which is a pickle file, model.tkl. Mm -hmm. And that's all to it, I mean, simple script. But I probably want to emphasize, uh, Workbench is not an IDE, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, we don't recommend <laughs> you to edit your Python codes using it. Uh, for that, you have special tools like uh, VS Code, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Or uh, whatever you prefer. Um, 
we're using this tool specifically to prepare your data, then use uh, code created somewhere mm -hmm. else, but then to manage all of those executions, to track them, that's why this exactly. tool was created. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very good point. And, and uh, so just, just to uh, sort of emphasize more on that, mm -hmm. you can in fact open your, you can configure your ID. Mm -hmm. So you can open this project nice. in VS Code, nice. right? It lets you configure your ID. If you work on PyCharm, you can configure it in PyCharm. So we, we give Perfect. you all that freedom there, right? Perfect. So that's a good point. So going back to the demo, so in this case, uh, we, we just looked at Iris uh, sklearn. Mm -hmm. Let me just let me just run it. This is my experiment essentially, right? Okay. And as we go to run history, we'll we'll, we'll let it run. And a key point to note here is as it is run uh, while it is running. If you look at this drop down, I'm running it in my local mode. Right. And if you if you think about the slide that I was presenting, you can as well run it on the cloud. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. like in an SDI cluster, if you want to make if the computation power of your local laptop CPU is not enough, mm -hmm. you can as well run an experiment in a GPU on Azure or in right. SDI cluster on Azure. But you can also run it locally but in Docker environment. Exactly. Right? In the container. Yeah. Yeah so that you can reproduce this environment in the cloud. In this case, all the dependencies, mm -hmm. the same environment basically mm -hmm. will be executed there. Yeah. So let's look at uh, some of the runs. Mm -hmm. And oh, nice. this is the run that just got completed. All right. And it gives you, uh, so now this is what we call as the run history. Mm -hmm. It gives you, uh, as you are doing various runs, how's the accuracy of your experiment is changing. Right. And how's the duration is changing. In this case, I have my custom parameter regularization rate. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I can pick like my experiment that has been, let's say, most accurate. I can mm -hmm. pick this one. So, uh, as, as you can see, the, as as I highlight this point in the accuracy graph, mm -hmm. it gets highlighted everywhere. I see. I see. I see. Right. So you can easily, by graphic uh, graphics by plot, find what was the run, yeah. what parameters you used, mm -hmm. basically, even if you, can you run multiple scripts and, uh, or for each individual script you will have different logs, log screens? Oh, for each individual yeah. script it's different. So I as, you, as okay. you can see here, I have some runs for the score file, some runs Got for it. the uh, sklearn file and so on, right? Okay. And then you can go to a specific experiment mm -hmm. or a specific run and see more details like whatever you have logged here, like your regularization rate and uh, accuracy. Okay. And you can see like awesome visualizations to let you decide if if, mm -hmm. if you are getting what you want from an experiment, right? But you will have to implement those visualizations. Exactly. Right? You yeah. will have to use Matplotlib, for yeah. instance, to create those plots. A exactly. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And th this is where it will give you a freedom of whatever you can use in a Python script, essentially. Right. Mm, right. So I guess that's the most interesting part for the developers. If they already have their model and they're using a framework like mm, TensorFlow mm -hmm. or CNTK mm -hmm. or something, what they will need to do with their code to actually utilize all of that nice capabilities of mm -hmm. uh, experiment, experimentation services and model management yep. services. Yep. And then we provide various logs. I mean, you can see if something has gone wrong, you can check the control log or the driver log shows you uh, essentially all the output. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I mean, since we are logging all things, it's saying, okay, I've plotted this curve and the confusion matrix plotted and all that stuff, right? So, and as you can see, it clearly tells us based on what we are logging that we have run this logistic regression on this data. This is the regularization rate that we have used. Mm -hmm. And based on all that, I mean, it determines what type of, uh, in this particular case, what type of class it yes. is. Can we quickly go to the original uh, code just to see uh, how we're logging those data? Uh, yeah. We basically need to import one library and then use uh, those log commands, right? Yeah, That's how sure. you do it. Yeah. So this is your run logger library that we are talking about. Uh -huh. And as you can see, various places where I'm logging certain stuff. So for instance, here I'm saying my regularization rate is this. Or right. I'm doing a run logger dot log. This is that's how you log it. Yeah, that's how you log it. Nice. Okay. So and another interesting thing here is if I come back to my run list, not only you can log your own custom metrics that mm -hmm. you have provided in your in your Python script. You can also compare multiple runs, right? So you can mm. compare these two runs okay. to see how are these different. So for example, in this particular case, 
I know I changed my regularization rate from like a 10 to 0.01. Mm -hmm. And you can clearly see how it has impacted your accuracy. Mm -hmm. That let, lets you as a data scientist take a call on, okay, which is the model you want to go with in your production. Right, so if you have multiple hyperparameters, that's going to be a really good choice to basically choose which hyperparameters exactly. you need to optimize for next. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, so, so this is how like you run your experiments, and once you have run your experiment, as we have seen, we have also logged, uh, in, in this particular case, we have created what we call as a model file, a model mm -hmm. pickle file, right? And that's your model that you want to deploy in your Docker container. Right, so at this point you're done with the training, you're basically collecting all of mm -hmm. those weights or whatever internal parameters you have in your model and you will be using it to then do the inference, exactly. do the prediction. Exactly, and this is where that model is mm -hmm. that we were talking about. I have already downloaded it on my local so that I can start deploying it now. Nice. So that's the next step we'll be moving to. Okay. So we are done with data prep, we are done with our experimentation and now we're moving on to mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> deploying our model as a REST API. Great. So deployment is done, you can actually go to file and open command prompt. And this is another feedback that we have got from, because once it gets to uh, deploying a model, mm -hmm. that's a step usually not done by data scientists. It's right. usually done by like a DevOps or a developer. Right. Uh, Kind of a or data engineers. I heard this term before. Data engineers, right? <laughs> so they love using uh, PowerShell or command prompt, right? Yeah. So you can open command prompt here from here, mm -hmm. and then start working on what we call as model management. Okay. Right. So in this particular case, I've already set up the environment just to sort of save some time here. Okay. So essentially, we are talking about just three commands here, actually, right? So you, so uh, we are extending the Azure CLI, mm -hmm. which developers know as AZ, mm -hmm. AZ CLI. Right? CLI, that's the uh, command line Co command interface. interface. Exactly. Yeah. So we have extended it, and we are uh, we are using what we call as AZ ML. Mm -hmm. ML is machine learning, obviously. Yep. So this is your first step, whereby you want to set up your environment mm -hmm. to sort of deploy your models, right? Okay. So we are just saying here AZ ML environment setup and providing an environment name here. Mm -hmm. and providing a location, the usual uh, Azure stuff, mm -hmm. and just providing dash C here stands for, we are de deploying a cluster environment. So I'm deploying it as an ACS cluster on the cloud. I'm not doing a local deployment. Got I can it. as well do a local deployment, mm -hmm. but I want to show off uh, ACS cluster in the deployment. Cloud. Makes sense, right? yep. So once you do that, it asks you for a subscription and all the usual stuff, creates mm -hmm. a resource group for you, and it takes some time, 10, 15 minutes, and then, provisions all the resources. Mm -hmm. In the background, it is provisioning like the whole ACS cluster, your master node, your agent nodes, mm -hmm. and whatnot, right? So all of that is done for you behind the scenes. Oh, exactly. And that's yeah. great, yeah. okay. And we can actually have a look at it on how all those resources look like mm -hmm. in the Azure portal. Okay. So as you do that, you're done. You're set up with your environment, right? And you mm -hmm. can, and, and again, for any command, you can just say, like in this case also, you can say ACML environment setup, dash dash help. Mm -hmm. If you want to see any help around all around additional the CLI. options available, all to additional you, parameters, options. yeah, makes yeah. sense. So then you can just look at your environment that you have set up. Just confirm you are happy with it. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure you tie a model management account to it. Mm -hmm. Remember how we talked about like this is the account that will be used to manage your models. Yes, yes. So just like you have an experimentation account to manage your experiments, we were looking at run history and stuff. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you need a model management account to manage your models. Right and. We'll again look at all the models in the in the Azure portal. Mm -hmm. So once you set an environment, environment tie uh, your environment to a model management account, mm -hmm. and then you are ready to, to create a service. Then there's another command you call AZML create real time service. Mm -hmm. So in here, as you can see, we are using the model file. Mm -hmm. We are using uh, what we call as a score file. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, steps in our documentation on how to create a score file. So in the interest of time, I'm not like going there right, right, right. now. But developer can just follow those instructions. E exactly. And yeah. will reproduce all yeah. the steps. E exactly. Okay. And then you can provide a schema file and just provide the environment. In this case, it's a Python environment. Mm -hmm. And I just run this command of how to create a real-time service, right? Okay. And as you can see, like there are some interesting steps here. First of all, we are registering the model. Mm -hmm. Okay which is the model.pickle file yeah, there. That's how we're going to track basically what's e going on e there. Exactly. Okay. And then we are creating a manifest. Mm -hmm. And from that manifest, we are creating a, an image. Mm -hmm. And then we are done. 
Okay. So once this is done, now as you can see the service ID, it is actually deployed on a container mm -hmm. in ACS cluster. Mm -hmm. And it gives you the usage on how you can call that uh, particular service that is the endpoint that is not deployed on an ACS cluster, how you can call it in either command line or partial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And just to uh, quickly show this thing off, you can just look for the model management account. In this mm -hmm. case, I know I'm using this model management account. Right. And you can go to the model management area. In here, as we talked about, you see the manifests, images, and the services right. that you have deployed. Okay. And the cool part here is I want to emphasize this. This image that I've deployed, it's a Docker image. Mm -hmm. So you can pretty much take that image and deploy it anywhere that supports Docker. Right. So right. that gives you a lot of flexibility in moving across, like from on-prem to cloud and right, 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 right. Machines, and then right. you can use Kubernetes or any other basically orchestrator around it exactly. if you need something yeah. more complex. Okay. And this shows me the services. And in this case, I have one service, and as you can see, it is deployed inside a container. Mm -hmm. And this is on an ECS cluster. Got it. Okay, and now I go back to here, and again, just to showcase here, uh, now I can just run it. Basically, now I'm scoring against this service. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just making a, I'm using another command, easy ML service run real time, and I'm providing this particular service endpoint, as we have seen here on the Azure portal as well. Mm -hmm. and based on these four parameters that I provided where we started with this problem, it is telling me, okay, this this flower is Iris Setosa based on whatever inputs I've provided. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's all I have to <laughs> talk about. <laughs> well, great, okay. So, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I will try to sum up what we've learned today. Uh, there's basically new experimentation services, uh, which are specifically designed for data scientists to play around with different models, with different hyperparameters to optimize their models for better accuracy, for better performance. And there is a uh, model management service. So when you're done with the experimentation and you already trained your model, uh, but you can have multiple um, services or multiple containers actually doing those inference or predictions uh, to track those guys you use using model management service. And uh, you demonstrated Workbench. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a tool, standalone application, which helps you to actually do the first part, data preparation. And I think uh, data preparation part was amazing. Uh, it uh, will save a lot of time for if you need to organize your data in particular form, that's going to help you a lot. And then to track all your runs, to track all different hyperparameters. So basically, IML, Azure Machine Learning, Learning Workbench, is the amazing tool for that. Yeah. Yeah, right. and I just want to sign off with a couple of quick things. So as you are seeing here, this smiley icon, this is how you can provide us your feedback. Once you click on it, it will capture whatever screenshot is open on mm -hmm. the on the workbench. Feel free to provide your email, mm -hmm. provide your comments, and we are more than happy to hear back from you on what you feel about uh, the product. All right, so anything you think will improve the quality or make your life easier, please uh, write your feedback, and I'm pretty sure you guys can incorporate it. Yeah, and we, we, we definitely look to incorporate that feedback, and also we are rolling out uh, sort of frequent updates to the product as nice. well. As you can see, November 2017 update is already there, and uh, I'm yet to update on it. Mm -hmm. So usually whenever an update is due, uh, on this bell icon, you will see some sort of notification. Keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. Usually, it is related to if you're on an older version of the of the workbench. I see. So you will see it on top, or maybe uh, on this bell. So you, you'll see it on the bell for sure. Got yes. it. And you'll see it here as well, whereby you can click and look at our release notes and what we are we have added new to the product. Right. And uh, also, whatever capabilities you have on the workbench, mm -hmm. you have pretty much same capabilities except for the data preparation part mm -hmm. as a part of Visual. Uh, Studio Code extension, mm -hmm. and so this is the extension, Visual Studio Code tools for AI, mm -hmm. that uh, if you do a Control Alt P, a shortcut, and mm -hmm. it will give you all these AI related commands, nice. which are all tied to Azure Machine Learning. Got it. So for example, I have one open right here, you can go to the Sample Explorer, that's how you can start and mm -hmm. look at things like classifying iris sample, the way I've shown you these samples on the workbench. Same sample, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Makes sense. And last but not the least, super important, make use of this documentation, go to help, mm -hmm. go to documentation, and uh, there are like quick starts and there are tutorials and 
we, we have like a detailed Iris tutorial mm -hmm. on how you prepare your data, build model, deploy models, learn more about that advanced data preparation. And Very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.